What's going on guys? Welcome back to Go Boys YouTube channel. So we're having a few issues with the Hawk. Well, one issue in particular, we're getting spark knock, uh, pre-ignition or uh, pinging, whatever you want to call it. There's multiple different names for it. So today I've got a couple different spark plugs we're gonna take a look at here. And uh, we're gonna see if a spark plug will hopefully fix this issue. And you guys can tell I'm in my swimsuit and flip flops. It's a hot day. We're going swimming after this. So uh, don't mind my uh, outfit here. All right, here we go. A lot of people have been going with the NGK spark plug. So that's what I got. This is the number on the spark plug here. So we'll take a quick look at it. Oh yeah, and these are made in Japan. So you know these are good spark plugs. If you're gonna put a different spark plug in the Hawk, this is what you wanna go with, an NGK. So this is the coolest spark plug that I could get from my local auto parts store. So the whole thing here is, I think that this spark plug may be, well, it was fine for what, five, 6,000 miles, but at this point, for some reason, we've developed a pinging in the engine so we're gonna go with the cooler spark plug and hopefully that'll fix it so anyways this is it uh you guys can see that they're not very much different at all you can see the crush washer is bigger on the newer one of course because it hasn't been crushed down but uh there's nothing fancy going on here you don't really need a fancy spark plug it's an ngk it's going to work forever and honestly the uh torch spark plug there's nothing wrong with this spark plug the only reason we're changing this out is just to try and get rid of that spark knock. So let's go ahead and put this in the bike. Again, you don't ever want to get it on the electrode itself. So there is one other thing I like to do to my spark plugs. This being a new spark plug, of course, it's never had it done. So we have dielectric grease here. I'm gonna take a little splash of this and just put it on the spark plug. As you guys know, my bike sees plenty of water, so we need the dielectric grease. Now we just pop this on here, should be good to go. So now we're gonna take it for a test ride, probably put a couple hundred miles on it before we know for sure if the pinging or spark knock is gone for sure. So put a couple miles on, hopefully you can see that it's 7,004 miles. So we have put a few miles on, figured out that that spark plug is not going to do the trick. We're actually gonna have to rejet the carburetor. So. Uh, this morning, I'm going to take it on a small ride, warm it up, and I'm going to try and attempt to show you guys the spark knock or the pinging in the engine. Hopefully you guys can hear that. to make this simple for you guys so i know in the video it's really hard to pick out what is what as far as the sound goes coming from the engine especially if you're not there in person it just doesn't sound the same but the pinging in my bike is sounding more like kind of like a chirping or a cricket here's a clip of the bike running not pinging now here's a clip of the bike running and pinging so listen very closely again here so you're listening for a chirping or like cricket-like noise um, coming from the engine. So here's one with the bike not pinging. And here's one with the bike pinging. So hard to kind of hear. You don't really know what you're listening for. Um, without knowing and it's hard to know without even hearing it in person so if you guys can't hear it I totally understand but it's like the chirping or um, it's hard to explain just like a chirping noise coming from the engine and spark knock the spark plug did not fix the issue as you guys already know now we're gonna be digging into the carburetor we're gonna undo this clamp possibly this plunger on the top of the carburetor. The plan is to just undo these so I can turn the carburetor sideways and get to the bottom of it. Go. The main part of the jet came out with the, the actual part we call the main jet. So you guys can hopefully see we have a 110 main jet on there. Again, it may be backwards because of the front facing camera, hopefully not. So I'm gonna tighten this back in here. This is a seven millimeter, by the way, if you guys are having the same issue. 
All right. So we're going to replace the 110 main jet with a 108. So it's a 108 jet. All right, guys. So just wanted to explain real quick why we're going from a 110 to 108. So with the engine spark knocking or pinging, you would think that you're running too lean. So here's the deal. Here's the reason why I went with a smaller jet and not a larger jet. So when we're out in Utah, you know, there's a lot of different elevation changes and the bike ran better lean because we were higher up above sea level. So I took the little spacer washer out of the needle here. So the bike was running leaner out in Utah. So, so I rode the bike when I got home for a little while with the washer not in there. And you know, the bike didn't seem to be running exactly right, but it wasn't pinging. So the bike was running leaner and it had less pinging. So I put the washer back in here and the pinging came back quite a bit more. So the bike likes to run leaner and when it's running leaner, it's not pinging as much. So obviously we want to go with a leaner jet and not a richer jet. So if it comes down to it, we will go back the other way. We will put richer jets back in it. But for now, we're going to try a lean jet and hopefully this is going to work. All right, let's take it on a ride and see how it does. All right, the 108 did not work. You see we have the carburetor apart again. So I'm not thinking a 105 is going to fix it, but we're going to try it anyway. So here we go, putting a 105 jet in here. We'll test it, we'll let you guys know the result. So the pinging is about the same with the 105. So we're going to start going the other direction. We're going to put a 115 in it. Remember, originally we had a 110. So we're going richer this time. All right, guys, I put the 115 in it. Seemed to get maybe like 1% better, not really better at all. So we're going to step up again. I'm going to try a 120. If this doesn't work, I'm not sure what we're going to do. So again, using the front facing camera. So hopefully you guys can see the 120 on there. So we're going to change that out, ride it, and hopefully it fixes it. Okay guys, the Hawk is apart again, had the 120 main jet in it. Clearly that jet was way too big. The bike is overly rich and it's still pinging. So long story short, the carburetor and the jetting is not the issue. Um, so we're gonna move on to something else. All right guys, so I got a bottle of water here that sprays, as you can see. So the deal here is you take water, you put it down a hot engine and carburetor and it gets the carbon deposits out of the engine. So we're going to try that and see if that fixes the problem. take it on a ride we're going to see if that fixed the issue so breaking up the carbon deposits with water didn't work so we're moving on to something else uh, i think we're going to go ahead and check the air filter make sure it's all nice and cleared out plus i kind of want to show you guys how the air filter looks after utah looks like this so you can see we did get some dirt in there out in utah some dust and here's the filter and the air box. No surprise, that's fairly dirty too. Now we're gonna take the air filter off, see what's underneath it. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. Again, dealing with the front facing camera. So I'm doing the best I can here, but we do have a fairly dirty filter. It could definitely use blown out at the very least. So, not really too big of a deal, but this might be part of the problem. So we'll clean it up, put it back together, and uh, take it for a ride, see how it does. So I'm gonna show you guys the air box before we do that. So take a look down in there. All right guys, so 
we can see how dirty the outside of the air box is and then the inside past the air filter actually looks pretty clean you can also see there's some liquid down in there that's actually oil so that oil has came back up our crankcase breather tube here i'll tell you what we're gonna do one better so we're gonna leave the bike exactly like this no air filter at all the bike's got as much air as it could possibly get uh, without having the air filter in it so we're gonna take it up the road and see if it's still pinging with the air filter out of the bike. If it is, we know we have some other issue. So here we go. Just took it for a ride. Looks like it's still pinging. So air filter is not the issue, unfortunately. I wish it was that simple. So now we're gonna have to move on to things like the ignition and the CDI box. All right guys, so we're checking the spark plug they've gone ahead and changed the jet back to a 115 so we're going to try that as well but uh we'll take a look at the spark plug here all right so there's our spark plug can you see it pretty well i mean doesn't look too terribly bad looks about like it has looked uh with any of the other jets in there so yeah like you said, not sure what's going on. Like we're gonna try the 115 in here, see if that changes anything over a period of time. So we're gonna go put about 60, 70 miles on today and uh, we'll see what happens after that. So we're now at 7,360 miles. Hopefully you guys can see that. Unfortunately, the 115 main jet did not change anything. We still have a pinging issue going on here. All right, so quick look at the spark plug here. And as you guys can see, really honestly, not that much of a difference. Um, looks pretty normal. Doesn't look like it's too hot or anything. So not really sure exactly what's going on still, but uh, seems like the jetting once again is not an issue Alrighty, guys so this kind of only leaves us a few directions to go so the next step we're going to take is to go ahead and go through the bike clean up some of the electrical terminals all right guys so we have the bike stripped down here so really you're looking for corrosion or dirt that gets in between contacts so let me show you guys a couple good examples here. So this right here um, is a decent example. You can see it's shiny, but there is some rust starting to develop. So this really shouldn't be a big issue at all. Really, um, you've hit the jackpot when you find a terminal like this that's completely covered in rust. That's, that's a terminal that you know is causing some issues. So this one, probably not causing issues, but it could use cleaned up. Ideally, you want to get the rust completely off of this stuff. You can see I've got a decent bit of rust off, not all of it. So it needs a little more work. Any kind of terminal like this just needs the dirt and rust cleaned off of it. We're going to take some dielectric grease, get a little bit of it out of the tube here. And you're going to want to put it on each connection spot on the coil, front and back. All right, this also bolts onto the coil. So we're gonna put some front and back on here. Make sure everything's got a good little bit on it. Same with the eyelet, a little bit of dielectric grease on that. Now we can go ahead and put the coil back on the bike. So this is a tricky part here, getting everything lined up. So what I like to do is put the terminals on the bolt and then get it started. Tighten it down. I was trying to take this terminal off of here, or at least I thought it was a terminal. They've actually got this soldered on here. Since this is broken, it's not like I can just slip another piece of heat shrink on there. So that's where I use this corrosion X and try and get it sprayed up in the wire, back down the other side of the wire, and just kind of fill it in. And then that way, we're not gonna have any rust or corrosion of any kind going on in there. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna go through each connection on the bike that's related to either the coil or the CDI box, get them all cleaned up, put some dielectric grease on the connections, and then we'll come back.
All right, guys, all the connections that I could find have been gone through and cleaned up. Um, in all honesty, I don't think this is going to really do anything. So as you guys know, I went through the entire bike when I got it, put dielectric grease on all the connections. Um, so there really wasn't much to clean up. There wasn't much rust or corrosion. So like I said, I don't think this is gonna do anything, but we're about to take it on a ride and find out. As suspected, cleaning up the connection didn't really do anything. We still have pinging going on. There was one thing I was curious about, which is the eBay tachometer wire, which is wrapped around the spark plug wire here. So we're gonna go ahead, cut this off, take the bike for another ride and see if this doesn't fix it. So that didn't work. Now we're going to move on. This is going to be the last thing we look at before we have to go ahead and order parts. So we're going to adjust the valves. I don't think this is going to have any effect on the pinging whatsoever. They seem not far off. So unfortunately the time lapse didn't take, but the valves are adjusted. Let's take it on a ride and see if it fixed our problem. All right, guys. So despite all the efforts, we have made zero progress. Uh, the pinging is overall still the same so we're kind of coming to the end of the road now we're going to have to order some parts i'm going to order a coil and the cdi box we're going to put those on there and see what happens new parts are here for the hawk just got them in today you can see we got a cdi box as well as a coil hopefully these two things are going to fix our issue So I know you guys are gonna be wondering and asking for your bikes. So I bought these couple things off of eBay. Let me show you guys. They are exactly the same as the OEM Hawk parts. So hopefully you can see the terminals in both of those. Everything's exactly identical. Same brand and everything. And same for the coils. They're literally exactly the same. G319. So now let's go ahead and do some simple testing here. So I suppose we'll start out with the coil. When you check coils, normally you check them for resistance. Um, I'm sure there's some other tests you can do with them, but this is about all the testing that uh, this multimeter is capable of. So first of all, you guys can see the multimeter. It just says one. Then if you cross the terminals here, it goes to zero. So basically, this being a coil, it should read some resistance. There should be a little bit of resistance, but not too much. So when a coil is burnt out, what you get is a reading like this on the multimeter. What happens is the windings burn up, they connect together, and then it causes the coil to short out. So I also thought it'd be notable to mention here that a coil can burn up in two ways. So really what happens when a coil burns out is one of two things. It's shorting out in one way or another. So you can either have a bunch of wires melt together and that's what causes a, like a dead short kind of reading where you get zero on the multimeter or you can have the coil burn out where you get one wire that burns up and causes an open circuit. And this is where you get infinity resistance, which is also known as an open circuit and the multimeter will read infinity or one. What we're gonna have to do here is actually test the connection down in here where the spark plug connect and connect to this. Okay, so we have 9.26. We're also gonna test this little wire here. We can get to it. and 9.27. So that's what we're reading on the coil. That's resistance. So that's what we're looking for. So now on this coil, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to measure resistance to the ground leads here. And we have 9.08. So I'm not sure if that's a big enough difference between new and old to cause pinging, but there is a difference. So that could possibly be the issue, but again, I almost doubt it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to 
the CDI box. Again, um, I have no idea exactly how to test these, uh, but we can test for resistance, try different terminals, and possibly get an idea if there's anything wrong with either of these CDI boxes. Hmm. So I'm not really reading any resistance uh, off of the new CDI box. So unfortunately, there's probably gonna be no good way to test the old CDI box. So I suppose we're gonna start out with the coil. We'll throw this on the bike along with the old CDI and see what happens. Original CDI box, we got the new coil on here, as you can see, hopefully. And we have 7,364 miles and 250.3 hours. Keep in mind, we've had the eBay tachometer disconnected. So unfortunately, the coil didn't do anything. Let's go ahead and throw some more money at it and put the CDI box in it. Let's give it a shot. And unfortunately, the computer, the CDI did not do anything. We still have pinging. So we're gonna go ahead and explore something else now. So we're actually gonna take a look at the timing on the Hawk 250. Those two marks, if I'm not mistaken, those are the top dead center marks. So now I've got a straw. We're gonna stick it in here and looks like we're at top dead center. So this so by checking the timing here, what we're actually checking is to make sure that the woodruff key didn't break for the flywheel. And the flywheel, if it's off in any direction because of a broken woodruff key, this will throw your timing off because the flywheel directly relates to and directly sets the electronic timing for the Hawk 250. So to make it very clear here, obviously we're not talking about mechanical timing at all. So what we are talking about is the electronic side of timing. And if you didn't know, the flywheel itself has one specific spot. It's got magnets all on the inside of it. It's got one specific spot. And as that specific spot passes the pickup coil, so, so we'll say our flywheel's here, our pickup coil is here. When that flywheel goes around, that one specific spot on the flywheel sends a signal to the pickup coil, and then that goes to the CDI box, and then so on to your spark plug. So really, this is to deal with only the electronic side of timing, but a Woodruff key can throw your timing off enough, obviously, to make the bike not run. It can make it run funny. Um, you can advance or uh, slow down the timing and in short what we're checking on is to make sure the woodruff key isn't sheared or broken off causing the timing to be slightly off causing the pinging and in this case it doesn't look like the woodruff key is broken so in other words the flywheel is in the correct position came across some other things online that could possibly cause some pinging there could obviously be some mechanical issue inside the motor that can cause pinging Valves that don't seal correctly could cause pinging. So we're going to be checking the compression here real quickly. Also bad rings, piston, things like that. Um, along with many other aspects of the engine. Um, like I said, the, the timing could be off, something like that. There could also be the timing mechanically off. Um, as you guys all know, all the timing happens in the bottom end. Uh, this is a push rod engine, so there's no timing chain. None of the timing has changed. It's all factory timing. We haven't done anything with the bottom end, as you guys know. The last thing we're doing here is checking the compression. All right. Getting a little closer. Zoom in on it. You guys can see we're well over 90 so we don't have any issues with compression so there is one more thing i've been doing some more research kind of desperately trying to figure this thing out i really really like to figure this issue out it's uh, just bugging me and i'd like to get it fixed so i came across something else 
and this is kind of obvious but the stator itself and there's also a uh, pickup coil so one of the things we can do without even tearing into this is actually test out the stator as well as the pickup coil um, and the stator isn't really going to have anything to do with our issue but the pickup coil will so now that we know the flywheel is in the correct position we have to move on to something else so we have to bring up the question is there something wrong with the electronics so we've already replaced the cdi box we've already replaced the spark plug coil so now there's only a couple other components that could possibly have an issue so there's three things that relate to the flywheel itself. So you have the stator, which is not really related to timing at all. It just kind of charges the battery. So we have the exciter coil, which from my understanding is what charges and gives the spark plug the power that it needs to spark. And then we have the pickup coil, which is actually what signals the spark plug when to spark. So now we're gonna be testing some resistances and some voltages that are coming out of the exciter coil and the pickup coil stator wires come out of the back of this case right here as you can see you come over here come straight up go under this and you can see we have a couple wires here so um, some of these wires are for the shifter position switch down there but uh, as i said before the stator wires come out of here as well so this is the uh, two sets of wires so this is the shifter position wire and this would be the stator and pickup coil set of wires here. They all go up to this bag of connectors here. So we have three wires that we're gonna be using here to test this out. So three main important wires. We have the ground wire, we have the pickup wire, which is blue and white. The ground wire is green. And then we have the charging wire, which is black and red. So we have a much better multimeter here. You can see we're on a much lower setting for a volts AC. Uh, so you can see kind of sits at zero or somewhere around zero. Now we're gonna plug these in here, see what we get. All right, so this is without cranking it. Obviously when we start to crank it over, we should see some voltage. So about 0.16. So that's kind of right around the area for voltage for what we want to see from the signal wire. So unfortunately we don't have a manual so we don't really know if that's within spec or not. However, I have seen a lot of other Chinese bikes online and the general consensus is you're supposed to be between 0.3 and 0.5 somewhere on the scale for the signal wire. So it could potentially be an issue but again without a manual it's hard to say test the pickup coil charging wire so that's the red and black wire as I showed you guys before so we're going to be putting the black probe on green again and the red probe is going to be going on the red and black wire so we're going to be checking for ohms on this one so we have it set on 2000 ohms and nothing we'll try a different meter we're going to put it on 200 ohms and nothing this is where it gets a little complicated so the green wire that's a ground wire is not a true ground. So what I mean by that is that it's not actually connected to true ground in the sense that it's connected to the motor or the frame. So very shortly, very quickly, we figure out that you have to actually take the black lead of the multimeter and stick it on the frame or the motor in order to get any kind of reading. So basically going from the green wire, which is the ground wire, uh, to any of the other wires for testing for ohms is not gonna give you any kind of reading because the green wire is not connected to an actual ground like the motor or the frame. So I'm not sure why, but we did not get a reading for ohms for the exciter wire or the charging wire. And again, don't forget, we have to go from the actual ground, which is the motor or the frame, to each of those individual wires we wanna test for ohms. Now, we're still connected to the red and black wire, the charging wire, and instead of going to the ground on the stator, I'm gonna to go to the ground on the battery and watch the voltage as I do this here. So 54 volts is what we saw. So that's pretty well within spec. And also, if we go to 
ohms here. We're gonna go to uh, 2K ohms. Go ahead and go to the negative on the battery terminal. We go ahead and get 320 some uh, ohms. So that's within spec as well. Um, so it looks like the coil is okay. So here's the conclusion on the pickup coil and the exciter coil. Uh, I don't have a manual, like I said, but based on other people's videos online, from what I could find, it looks like they're well within spec and it looks like they should be working fine. They look okay. Uh, the resistance tests okay and the voltage tests okay coming from both. So we're going to move on. We're going to just do a visual check on the spark plug itself. Just see what the spark looks like and see if there might be an issue there. Take a look at the spark plug and we should have a nice blue spark coming out of the spark plug. And so what I saw, you guys may have seen something different. I saw a few blue sparks, but I was seeing some abnormal sparking going on. It looked like there was yellow spark. So we may have an issue that could be the entire problem. So overall conclusion for the video, we have gone through pretty much every single thing I can think of from spark to electronics to mechanical to the flywheel, everything, the carburetor, the jetting, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so far from what I can see we've tested everything and mostly everything has checked out um, there's only a couple things that are concerns at this point so number one why is the spark sparking yellow um, that was with the new CDI box and the new coil on there doesn't really make much sense not sure what's going on there should be bright blue every time it sparks um, Maybe it's lower voltage because we're just turning the thing over, but it, sh it should be blue spark. Um, so, I don't know. That's one thing. The other thing is the ground wire coming out of the stator. Uh, why is it not an actual ground? Um, on many of the other videos, the green wire coming out of the stator is connected to actual ground. Why it's not connected on the Hawk, I don't know why. Um, maybe this is a problem. The question is, is that green wire supposed to be connected to actual ground? Because on my bike, it's not. So that might be the whole issue. So this is the part where you guys could possibly come in and help us out a little bit. All we need to know is, does the green wire coming out of the stator have continuity to ground? Meaning, is the green wire coming out of the stator supposed to be connected to actual ground? Okay, so for those of you guys that are looking to help the channel out, I'm going to show you guys a quick rundown of what you're looking for when you're testing this wire. So first of all, you're testing the green wire coming out of the stator. Um, what we're doing here is, I'll show you. So the multimeter here, we can see it's reading one. Basically, this is the equivalent to an open circuit. What we're looking for is a solid connection to ground. So... When you cross these terminals, it's a solid connection. You get very little or no resistance. Basically, um, this is the equivalent of a solid wire. So how you're gonna test for this is your black lead goes on the negative terminal of the battery and the red lead is gonna go on the green wire coming out of the stator. When you connect those two up, you're either gonna get one of these two readings. You're either gonna get one or you're gonna get solid connection to ground. So that's what we need to know. Is the green wire coming out of the stator solidly connected to ground? If you guys have some time and can figure this out, or if you know this off the top of your head, comment it in the comment section below. It'd be much appreciated and would definitely help the channel out. So if you guys know or figure it out, let us know in the comment section below. I'd be very curious to see maybe this is a problem all along. Um, like I said, I just have no idea because I don't have another Hawk and I don't have a manual sitting here. So um, a little bit of help would be much appreciated. That's the conclusion on this. Everything's checked out. Two concerns are the spark plug not really showing bright blue spark every time and is the ground wire supposed to be connected to actual ground. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you had a fun time watching me go through all this stuff for nothing. Uh, boy, it has been a great time. So um, what I'm doing now with the bike is I'm still running it, and I'm just going to run it the way it is with the ping. 
Um, until something catastrophically fails, uh, you know, I'm not sure what else really to do here. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below. There'll be other Hawk 250 videos like this linked down there. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Woo! It's all about humanity.